If you're looking to start processing credit card payments at your company, it's hard to go wrong with Stripe. However, even though it's an extremely reliable and widely used system, Stripe isn't always the easiest thing to get started with if you're non-technical. And if you're converting a brick and mortar business into a digital company with an online storefront, there will be even more challenges in the way. Thankfully, there are some easy ways to solve these issues and start using Stripe to collect payments, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we use tools like Stripe, Softer, and Airtable to help our clients set up online stores and much, much more. If you'd like to learn more about X-Ray and our services, check out our website at xray.tech. In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the key hurdles you're going to face as you set up Stripe for the first time. And I also wanna share some tips and advice for getting the most out of Stripe without needing to write any code. Let's get started. Here we are in Stripe after creating a new account. It says up top, everything we're seeing here is just test data. To set up the account and actually be able to process transactions, you'll need to select activate payments. All of these things to the left really don't matter until you activate payments. So when you go to activate payments, you're gonna have all of this information that you have to enter in. All right, let's walk through the verify your business section here. And there's five sections. There's quite a bit of information that Stripe requires you to enter, but you can think of it like opening up a bank account. Any information that you would need to give a bank, you will need to give Stripe to open up your payment processing account. Most notably is the business structure on this page for business type. You could select multi-member LLC or private corporation. That's most likely the type of business structure that you are. And some questions inside of Verify Your Business may change depending on your business structure. If you're not sure about your business type, you can always ask your accountant. So we're gonna go ahead with a multi-member LLC. You have to provide the business legal name, the employer identification number. This is provided by the IRS. And I just wanna call out this one bit right here. Your legal business name and employer identification number must be entered exactly as they appear on the IRS issued documents, including capitalization and punctuation. Not sure? Check your letter 147C or SS4 confirmation letter. If you do not have this yet, you will need to get one. Now, this letter is able to be obtained after you call the IRS. Know that the IRS will never call you. When you call the IRS, they will go through a lot of these questions in a similar way and verify that you are a legal representative of this business. Then when you ask for a 147C letter, they will tell you that they cannot give you a 147C letter but they will send you a letter telling you that your employer identification number is XYZ and it will show your legal business name on it. Stripe will use this later on to verify your business remotely and allow you to activate your account. Moving on, business representative is just gonna be all of your information. They do ask for your social security number again, this is all secure information that is required in order to open and verify that you exist. It's really to prevent fraud and to prevent any type of scamming that people might try to do through Stripe. You add your business owners and you add public details. So if you have a website, customer support number, uh, any addresses that they should reference. And this is all used to collect and verify that your business is legitimate and exists. You can then connect your bank. This is gonna be any common bank or credit union inside of the United States in my case. And if you were to click on Bank of America, for example, they will then ask you to verify your bank. So you'll continue, it'll pop open in a new tab and you would actually log in to Bank of America through Stripe and that will authenticate your bank inside of your new account. This is gonna be the account that money is actually deposited into. So the flow of money is from your customer to Stripe. Stripe will process the payment and the credit card. Then your Stripe account will accumulate money and then will be deposited into your bank account here. You also should secure your account with the Authenticator app, a Touch ID device if you can, or SMS. 
it's always recommended that you have two-step authentication, especially because money will accumulate in here, depending on your volume, that could be quite a bit. So two-step authentication is always recommended. Extras like tax collection, depending on your industry or your specific business type, Stripe will be able to add or calculate taxes based on your location and the type of product or service you're selling. Climate contributions, I always recommend to turn this on. This is just a 1% of your revenue or, you know, half a percent, one and a half percent, where every single time someone is transacting, they'll see this notification here. Will contribute 1% of your purchase to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. And if you want to opt out, you can just click on no thanks. But I think it's a nice and easy way to help the environment. So I've enabled it on all my companies. And then in the summary, um, it's going to show you all of the information that you still need to add. And you can go into each one and edit and update this information. So this might take you a little while. It took us about a month to verify a brick and mortar business that we recently did a conversion on into digital payments. They're a parking lot, a 40 year old parking lot. And it took us about a month to get the letter from the IRS and verify all the details about the business before we could activate our account. Once you have your account set up, you'll see that there's no banner at the top anymore. You're ready to start accepting payments. Where we're gonna to start today is defining the difference between products, prices, and payment links. Note that getting started with Stripe suggests that you should start with a payment link or send an invoice. Both of these are no code friendly, and that's great, but it's kind of putting the cart before the horse. The first thing we need to do is create a product. So go to your product catalog you'll see the one parking spot product that we built for sandman.rent. There's 12 different prices here. So even though we have one product, we can have multiple prices relating to that product. Maybe you have different volume discounts or tiered pricing. All of those are different options inside of prices that correspond to a product. Note that you can create coupons, have different shipping rates, tax rates, and pricing tables as it relates to individual products. So let's go ahead and add another product here. This is just going to be a test parking spot. And we're building this for demonstration purposes. You could add an image and you could change the tax implications. So maybe this was a tangible good or a physical product like a battery or maybe some bath towels. All of those things will have different tax implications and you can identify them right here in this product tax code. You can also add unit labels or statement descriptors, metadata if you really want to. You can get pretty fancy with this stuff, but right now we're just going to leave it all blank. We're just setting up a simple product for a test parking spot. It's gonna be a one-off payment, so we don't need to worry about recurring payments, but if you wanted to, you could set a set amount to be billed in a whole bunch of different time increments. And you can even choose different pricing options, so flat rate or package pricing, tiered pricing, usage-based. Again, you can get fancy with this stuff, but one-off payments are just more simple to start with. So we can just say one off and we'll call it $100. And we are going to include tax in the price. So when we add this product, we see a new product right here. If we were to edit the product, we could edit the price and make it $0. But let's go a little bit deeper. This is the one price that we have for this product. Now we're gonna add a new price. So I'm gonna click on this button here to add a new price. And we see that familiar recurring one-off charge screen as we had before. If we wanted to do a one-off charge and charge this one for $100, you can see that it would charge $100 here. We could update a description to say really big parking spot and create a new price. Great. 
So now we've got multiple prices associated with the same product. That will let us sell variants of the same item at different prices. Now let's take a look at an extremely easy way to let people pay for this product that won't require you to write code at all. You can go to the left and you'll see payment links under this shortcuts section right here. You can see that I've already made a bunch of payment links for active parking spots, but let's add a new one and see what it looks like. On the right, you'll see a preview of what your customers will see when they click on the published payment link. There's a summary of what they're buying and fields to fill out with their credit card info. If you've enabled gateways like Apple Pay or Google Pay, your customers will see those options too. On the left, there are some options that we can configure. The first thing that it asks you for is the product that you want to create a payment link for. That's why we can't start here. If you didn't have a product, you couldn't make one. So let's go with the test parking spot. We can select a quantity. Maybe we actually want people to buy 10 of them, which would create a payment link for $1,000. We could also let the customer adjust the quantity. So you'll notice when I check this box here, you see a little quantity box selectable right here. You can also add multiple products to the same payment link if you'd like. This is a useful way to sell a pre-built bundle of items, but I'll just stick with one product in this link. You have additional options to collect tax automatically, collect the customer's address, billing and shipping address, and you can select which countries you want to ship to. But again, we'll just stick to their addresses only for billing. We can require the customer to add a phone number. And there's an advanced options section down here where we can add custom fields to collect other information, like for example, the license plate. This is useful if you are actually having people buy parking spots. You can set limits for how long this could be, and you can mark it as optional. Next, you can allow promotional codes. This is where your coupon codes will live. So when you add promotional codes, that coupon option that we saw earlier inside of products, that's where this would get entered in. You can ask businesses to provide their tax ID, and you can save details for future use. The call to action can be pay, book, or donate. And that's this button right here. Up top again, you have the option to configure after payment options. So by default, it'll say thank you for your payment. But if you want to replace it with a custom message, you could say that here. You can also create an invoice PDF. Stripe does charge a small fee for this, but at most it'll be $2 per invoice. Next, click create. Now you see what a live payment link looks like. We can copy this URL and open it up in a new tab. Now you have the option of actually transacting with this payment link. Now that you have a product and payment link, you might wanna test it out to make sure that everything works correctly. The easiest way to test a payment link in Stripe is to create a coupon for 100% off. So you can run a transaction without needing to actually fork over any dough. Let's make a coupon now. In your Stripe product catalog, click on coupons. Then click here to create a new coupon. The name could be free demo. We're gonna give it a 100% off discount, but you could do a fixed amount if you want to. You can apply this to specific products. So let's actually apply it to the parking spot product. It can stay live forever and we can limit the date range that it's used or the number of times that it's used. And we can make something fancy for a customer facing code. We'll call it live demo free. Copy that to use it later and we'll create the coupon. Once you've created a coupon code, you can open up your payment link and use the code to run a test transaction that won't actually cost you anything. Note that the transaction will still be logged in Stripe and you will see a new customer added to your records. Now let's wrap up this overview of Stripe payment links by actually publishing this link on a website. That's one of the key benefits of creating payment links. 
you can easily embed them into any button or link on your website. So your customers can just click once to immediately open up a checkout screen configured with all the details that you set up in your payment link. I've built a site for sandman.rent with an app called Softer. You can learn more about Softer in our beginner's guide linked on your screen now, but ultimately the process will be very similar for any website builder, Webflow, WordPress, Squarespace, Wix, even X-Ray Workflow and dozens of others. All you're going to do is copy the payment link and paste it into a button. That's it. Here in Softer, we have a bunch of different pricing options. And if we scroll down into this pricing block, we see that we can select Stripe Checkout as an option and add a price ID. But we have a payment link now, so we don't wanna use a Stripe Checkout because we added some custom parameters. A Stripe checkout with a price ID doesn't allow for coupons and it doesn't allow for adding additional parameters like we configured under the advanced options inside of the payment link. So instead, we'll add redirect to URL. Here, we can just paste that payment link right into this field. I'll click on preview to see the live site with an updated button. And once I click the link, I'm taken directly to the Stripe checkout page. That's all configured inside of Softer and Stripe. But no matter what website builder you use, you can just connect this payment link URL directly to a button. Then you'll be ready to accept transactions from your customers. Using a trustworthy, reliable payment processor like Stripe is a key part of selling your products or services online. Even though the initial setup can be a bit of a hassle, the results are more than worth it. Just follow some of the tips I've shared in this video and you'll be ready to collect payments with Stripe in no time. If you've enjoyed this video, prove you're human, like and subscribe for more automation tips every week. If you'd like to learn more about low-code automation and workflow design, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can find all those links in the X-Ray Workflow Resources Board down below, and as always, find your focus and stay in flow.